Dropbox has been out for a while and people are starting to understand what it is and the uses of it. And if you haven't heard of what Dropbox is, it's a program that will sync your documents, your photos, your movies, your programs all across a network or the internet. And so then, no matter which computer you go on that you have your Dropbox on, they all stay in sync. So if you delete one on one computer, they'll be deleted on the other computer. But it has a 2 gigabyte limit for the free service, but that is a problem for people that actually have stuff that they want to share or they want to actually do. That doesn't make sense, but just roll with it. So I'm going to show you what free NAS is. So FreeNAS will allow you to sync whatever you want across your network, unlimited storage, up to how big your hard drive is. So first, you want to go to FreeNAS.org and download the latest version, just 32-bit or 64-bit, depending on your computer. And once you have downloaded that, then you want to quit out of your browser and you can use uh, VMware or uh, VirtualBox. Both of them are free. You can download the VMware player from VMware.com. So first you want to create a new virtual machine. And then you want to use the ISO image and point it to the directory that you downloaded your free NAS image from. Then you want to click next, choose OS other free BSD because that's what free NAS is based off of. And you want to go to next, we can change this free NAS. You can change it to whatever you want. Um, I'll change it to 10 gigabytes and power it on so VMware will load and the reason I'm using the VMware is so I don't have to commit actual hardware so I can run this virtual machine without affecting my actual computer so I can actually use it instead of converting it to a NAS and have it just sit in a corner and not be usable so this way I can use Windows and still have a NAS set up. So you can quit out of this little pop-up and free NAS will load and I'll speed this up. Okay this pop-up just opened and and we just want to select one so you can just press enter the only hard drive that we have okay okay and now you just want to wait for the percent to get to a hundred okay free nas was installed onto the 10 gigabyte hard drive. Now we have to shut down our virtual machine. And once it's shut down, we need to change some settings in the virtual machine's layout so we can actually make uh, our normal partition on our hard drive. Once you shut down FreeNAS, you want to open back up VMware Player, click on FreeNAS, and then you want to edit virtual machine settings. And then here, you can change the memory up a little bit if you want. Um, you you want to also create another hard drive, or a hard disk in this case. So you want to click add, you want to allow permissions, then you want to click next, a new virtual disk, next, IDE, next. So we can make this as big as we want. I'll just make a 50 gig hard drive right now you can edit the size later I'll just store it as a single one and next 
So the name of this we can change. Let's change it to FreeNAS Data. Click Finish, and now we have a 50 gig hard drive and a 10 gig. The 10 gig can even go down to five, but we just want that for our free NAS installation. And then our hard drive, the data will be where we store all of our data. And he here we want to change uh, network adapters from NAT to bridged. So it will use our physical computer's internet so we can access the interface using the same IP address. Just do it, you have to. Um, and we also want to turn off the CD ISO image so you can uncheck the connect at power on. So click OK and let's start FreeNAS again. Okay, after a few minutes of running, we, I never had to do anything, and we're done basically here. All we want to see is this IP on the bottom. So, let's open up our web browser, and go to it. 13 and in FreeNAS 8 compared to 7, it will automatically log in for us, which is good. So, once it loads, which it should, we have to change our password, because that's what the alert is here. Because anybody that can type in a URL can log into our account right now. So, let's go to account, my account change password and we can leave our old password blank and let's type in a new password I'll change it to password just for now because I don't think anybody has thought of that it's like change admin password and it's okay if you leave the change root password as well checked also so password successfully updated that is good so if we want to start, we need to tell FreeNAS what drives it can use. So, click Storage, Create Volume. This is why we created the 50 gigabyte hard drive, remember, earlier? So we want to check this. Volume name, just, you can put like media or something. Uh, file type, ZFS. You don't have to force that, and then just click Add. Now we'll create the volume, and you can set up your own NAS with like RAID Z and RAID Z2 to automatically back each drive up, but this is just a simple uh, free alternative, and yeah. So it was created, now we want to change the permissions right here and since I'm only gonna allow this on my network people that are connected to my same router I can check every permission because I don't really care because I know everybody that's on my router who's accessing it okay now you can just check everything you want and just click change and yeah, like I said, you can just keep all of these checked. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Okay, now we want to create a username and password for people on our network logging in. So we can go to account, users, add user. So let's have our username be name and our password be a password that 
you want. And then you can just click. Oh, actually, you need full name too. So you can put name also. So you can put the full name and username as the same thing, just for now. This is a low security setup. So here we have it. Our username and our group name. So everything's set up. All we have to do is turn services on for what we want. So as you see under sharing, it shows the different types of services. We have AFP for Macs, CIFS for Windows, and NFS for Linux machines. And since everybody in my household is normal, we all have Windows machines. So we can turn CIFS on. So you can just click here and click add CIFS share. And here, this is the name that we want it to show up on our Windows machine. So just add NAS setup. I think you actually need a hyphen in it. I don't know. Underscore not hyphen. Um, comments my NAS path. You can just change it to our media folder. Um, We can just click OK once we're done here. OK, now that we have our NAS set up with our CIF created, we also want to turn CIFS on over here sorry I only said CIF before and we can edit the settings also uh, under the services tab because there are, are some more complex settings that we so there are no settings that I want to change in here but people may want to change their settings if they understand so to save them if you made them or click cancel if you didn't and once it is done we can actually try our network out so we can open this go to our folders and this is where we can test it to see if it works so you want to click the forward slashes above the enter key and then we want to type in 10.0.0.13 like we did for our website and as you see it says NAS setup which is really good good sign we can open it and it asks for a username and password so we can enter those in now and if you don't remember I'll show you if you don't remember your username or password you can open up users and you see we had our user named name and you could always change the password if you forgot in that short of amount of time so let's change to name and our password click OK and we have access to our NAS folder and now we can start adding stuff to this folder um, as you see I've added a new drive in my computer which is really nice so let's add some so we can add my Ubuntu Ubuntu installation stuff into the folder and then close out and we'll wait for some of them to copy cancel ok 
Okay, so now that you know we have some stuff copied into here. Then you can go to another computer on your same network and type in 10.0.0.13 or whatever IP address it was and access any of these files. And remember, we have a 50 gigabyte hard drive, so unlike other services, we don't have a limit on how much it is, and it's free, which is really cool. So now we have our free NAS running, we can just minimize our VMware, and anytime you want your free NAS to be accessible, just open up the free player and just leave it on. And free NAS, once we're done using the web setup, we can just log out. Now we have our free NAS set up, and if you want to be able to access your free NAS from your computer, like the computer screen, you want to go back to your 10.0.0.13, right click on the NAS folder, and then click Map Network Drive, and then it will create a drive letter and you can have it connect at login but since it's a virtual machine the virtual machine won't always be on and then you can just click finish and then it will be added to your computer when you go to my computer or computer on windows vista or 7. so now you guys can have a dropbox of unlimited size basically on your computer